Okay, I'm really excited. We've made our way through tenths and hundredths, and now we're ready to learn about those tiny, tiny, tiny pieces, thousandths. Okay? Now, you guys already know a lot about decimals. Remember, you've been working with money. Now we're moving one place beyond what you're familiar with, which is the thousandths place. Even numbers in the thousandths place, though, are still representing a fraction of one whole. And of course, we know that numbers in the thousandths place are going to have a denominator of 1,000 when we write them in fraction form. Here's a visual model that shows you how tiny a thousandth really is. Here's our one whole, that's the square itself. And then you can kind of see the lines showing you where the tenths are. So the tenths are these 10 strips that go up and down. There's 10 of those. Hundredths are made by dividing the square into 100 equal pieces. That's like these, these squares here. They kind of look like a little um, one unit of the base 10 blocks. And then in order to get 1,000 equal pieces, we take each hundredth and cut that into 10 equal pieces. So each hundredth is cut into 10 equal pieces. 100 times 10 equals 1,000. So this whole has been cut into 1,000 equal pieces. And here we have eight of those tiny little pieces shaded in. Eight of those tiny little pieces, and you would read that eight thousandths. We have nothing in our tenths place here. We have nothing in our hundredths place here. And we have eight thousandths. Okay, now, Make sure when you're pronouncing these, you're really emphasizing the thousandths, the THS at the end. So this number would be read five thousandths. Okay, here we have, always start with what you know and not what you don't know. So we know ones, tens, and hundreds. So this would be 371, that's familiar. We have a decimal point. We're always going to read the decimal point by saying the word and. So I can pencil that in with my kindergarten writing. Okay, and 371 and now here I have two tenths, two hundredths, and or sorry, two tenths, six hundredths, and eight thousandths. I'm gonna read that by reading this whole group of digits together, 268, and then say the place value word of your last place value position, 268 thousandths. So here we have two models, our hundredths model and our thousandths model. And this is just to try to bring your attention to the fact that each of our thousandths is one tenth the size of one hundredth. Thousandths are tiny, tiny, tiny little pieces. So this whole here has been divided into a hundred equal pieces. And this whole here has been divided into a thousand equal pieces. And I also want to mention this to you because one thing we're going to be talking over and over again this year is the way our base 10 system is set up. Every time we move from one decimal position or one place value position to another, we're either going to be multiplying or dividing by 10. Since in this case, we're kind of thinking of it as being um, going smaller, like going from ones to tenths, and then from tenths to hundredths, and then hundredths to thousandths. In this case, we're dividing each unit by 10. We're cutting it each little um, 
model into 10 equal pieces to get smaller and smaller every time we go. So our one whole, when we divide that into 10 equal pieces, we get tenths. When we divide our tenths into 10 equal pieces, we get hundredths. When we divide our hundredths into 10 equal pieces, then we get thousandths. So that would look like this. Here's one tenth, and when we cut it into 10 equal pieces, one tenth of one tenth is one hundredth. It kind of gets to be like a tongue twister after a while. So we're dividing by 10. And then when we take our hundredths and divide that into 10 equal pieces, so again, we're dividing by 10. One tenth of one hundredth equals one thousandth. See how it becomes like a tongue twister after a while? Don't worry if this seems confusing to you. We're going to talk about it a lot this year, and it will get easier over time. Things always seem hard when it's new information.